Welcome back to Retrobeat and welcome back to the Commodore 64 Wonders, where in this fourth instalment we'll be looking at the quite fantastic year of 1987. And what a way to kick off 1987 with none other than Airborne Ranger, which was published by Micropro Software. Originally marketed as a thinking man shoot up Airborne Ranger has you blasting your way through 12 difficult and dangerous missions and you'll need brains as well as brawn if you are to survive. For me, this was one of the predecessors of the stealth generation of games. I absolutely love the fact that you could pick up enemy clothing, put it on and go undercover. In ninth, we've got California Games, which was published by Epix. Now this really was a great multi-event sporting game. Apart from the bag, I could never ever do that beanbag. As you'd expect from Epix, the presentation is really, really good. There's also a decent variation from event to event, and most of the graphics are beautifully drawn and animated. The playability, in my opinion, is highest on the surfing. After that, it's a close contest between the halfpipe, the frisbee, and the BMX. In 8th, we've got Kickstart 2, the construction set. Now this was one of Marsatronic's best ever budget games. This game came in for a measly 1.99. It was only 2 quid. And as I've said a few times before, that was well within my pocket money range. The inclusion of the track editor was just absolute genius and really, really prolonged the life of this game for me to play against my friends. In seventh, a few of you might have guessed this one because, of course, the original Gauntlet was in the previous list. But Gauntlet 2 from US Gold, it just had to be there. It was just everything the first one was, but a little bit better. This game definitely moves a little bit slower than what the original did, but for someone whose gameplay is a little bit limited like mine, that kind of helped me out a little bit. Obviously, this is incredibly similar to the first one, so if you didn't like the first Gauntlet game, you probably want to avoid this. In sixth, we have The Last Ninja from System 3. I bet a few of you can name this game just from the very first chords of this classic music. Ben Daglish absolutely nailed it with this tune. The Last Ninja is one of those rare games which offers hours of consistently puzzling and enjoyable gameplay. The music and the graphics are just absolutely stunning, especially for 1987. However, don't let that fool you because this game is absolutely solid. Into the top 5 and we have got the stunning Defender of the Crown, published by Cinemaware. Now although in 1987 everyone seemed to remember the Amiga version, for me personally, I genuinely thought that the Commodore 64 version played so much better. Originally, back in 1987, this was a game I only ever got to play at my friend Terry McNally's house due to him having a disc drive, and this game was only available on disc. However, it still makes it in to my top five, just sorely down to how amazing it was. No list of games from 1987 can be complete without Bubble Bubble, published by Firebird. An absolute smash at the arcade, and when it comes to the Commodore 64, this is how to do an arcade conversion. How to make a game addictive? Well, take control of a cute brontosaurus and hop around the 99 odd levels munching on bananas, strawberries and cherries left behind by fruit topping nasties which float around and make life difficult for you. That's how. Okay, now we get down to the nitty gritty. This is the top three. And in third place, we have IK Plus, published by System 3. In my opinion, probably the best fighting game on the Commodore 64. With its fluid animation and hard but fair difficulty curve, I literally can't think of better. It's almost too good to be true with the beautifully animated fighters, the great oriental music and FX. And then you've got the superb two-player mode. The action is fast and furious with the extra dimension added by the third opponent. 
In second, and just missing out on top spot, is Into the Eagle's Nest, which was published by Pandora. Now, obviously this is going to raise some eyebrows, because how can this be a better game than a lot of the predecessors? Well, to me, this is about nostalgia as well, and I absolutely adored this game. Again, this being one of the first games I ever played on the Commodore 64. To some, it may just be another Gauntlet clone, but to me, this was just like Gauntlet, but just even better with a World War II setting to boot. And in first, my favourite game that was made in 1987, it just has to be Platoon. Again, a massive amount of nostalgia for this game due to the fact that on that faithful day, the first time I ever played the Commodore 64, this was one of the games. Then when you add in the fact that in 1990 when this came out as a Hit Squad release, this was the first ever Hit Squad game I bought and this led to me, later on in life, collecting a full Hit Squad collection. This game has some of the best music I've ever heard on the Commodore 64 and it will always stick in my mind. And I really hope that you've enjoyed my look back at my favourite games that were made in 1987. And if the Commodore 64 and other 8-bit machines are your type of thing, then please consider subscribing to my channel. And until next time, goodbye.